Today I want to talk about like uh, an education campus that we built in um, uh, an outskirt of Shanghai which is called uh, Zhangjiang High Tech Park. Uh, it's a bit of like a tech campus, you must imagine universities, um, uh, research centers, a uh, bit of pharma. And we were asked to do the interiors for these uh, two buildings. So in the center, the, the main building, and we have the east wing of the building. Um, it is a, a, a postgraduate, it's intended as a postgraduate uh, education campus. Um, what we've been giving is, uh, is this space. So the, um, uh, the space was sort of nice. The composition was, was interesting. Uh, lots of smaller scale uh, in and around the building. But of course, the inside of these buildings always looks a little bit generic. What are you going to do with this, with this shell? How are you going to bring that into sort of like a creative um, and nice uh, study and working environment? Um, we started answering that question by, by sort of coming up, trying to come up with a system that would uh, equalize, let's say, the different buildings over the site. Um, um, that system is sort of like, I've tried to explain a little bit. Um, we first wanted to just adopt the building. So the first image on the left side is us adopting the building. It's a gray shell building. That's what the start. Then, of course, the second image is, uh, it means that it has like the rhythm of the, of the columns, which is particular in China, and we have, we maximized the height. The third image is, we would like to do something with hard flooring, and, and um, uh, therefore we, we chose to make the ceiling acoustically, um, uh, acoustically conditioning, let's say. Uh, the fourth image is, um, uh, we put the lighting up, and by putting the lighting up, we started to put light elements, which turned out to be round elements. And we started to play a little bit with the, the round versus the, uh, versus the square. So especially in China, there's always the, the square always stands for the, the more rational and the more <coughs> earthly, and the round stands for the more divine and the, the, the more spiritual. Moving on, um, of course, what are you going to do with doors and transitions? So to counterbalance, let's say, that maybe a bit harsh concrete uh, shell, we started to bring in these wooden elements as transitions to spaces. Um, a typical section of, uh, of how that looked like. And I'm bringing you back to the same space that you just saw. So this is the entrance space to the campus. And you see the, the rhythm of the beams, you see the, the ceiling being lit up, and you see all the transitions to the other spaces being negotiated with these wooden uh, uh, doorways and portals. Um, moving into um, uh, some more like administrative spaces, we kept on playing with the same kind of like materiality aspect. And we started uh, designing furniture. We kind of like wanted to give people a bit more space than just a table. So we wanted to give them a small space. We started to diversify materials a little bit more. So this is bamboo uh, engineered panels. It's handmade uh, uh, walnut legs and it is like soft cork uh, to start playing uh, the different materials. Um, these are floor plans of, uh, of the buildings. I will not talk too much about it. Um, I can, uh, the center left uh, is a lounge, on the right below you have a bookstore. The middle of this, uh, of this building has been taken by this staircase auditorium. Um, that really is the, the, the center, center the, the, uh, of the campus. Um, and you see kind of like more um, uh, uh, teaching spaces, meeting spaces around, uh, around here. Um, moving up uh, more administrative spaces but let's start talking about oh yeah you see an example of like how one of these um, uh, uh, these teaching rooms uh, uh, looks like um, you see the same system being brought in you see the landscape coming in you see the the space under the windows being used for formal for uh, for flexible seating and this is that, uh, that central space, which, uh, which had a skylight in it by, um, uh, by the design of the architect, uh, Ben Wood. Um, and what we try to do is we try to 
keep that central staircase very calm, we actually left these two white walls on the side and so they can catch the, the light beam that comes from that, uh, from that skylight. Around it, we created this wooden shell and that wooden shell would allow us to open up to all the different uh, functions around this atrium. Um, a section of that, of that atrium and we wanted that atrium to really be that space. So that space where you would, not only a transition space, but where you could look down from the administrative floor into the, into the, the, the lecture that was going happening downstairs. Um, there's a bookstore downstairs, the, the space opens up to the bookstore. A little bit what you see over here. Um, if I look back, uh, we started to use some color in the in the spaces as well. So this is called the sky room, uh, hence this kind of like these blue degrades, like alluding to uh, to the skies. Moving to the next uh, building, um, that building is purely educational. Uh, ground floor is uh, or the basement is actually uh, it's a workshop. Uh, thank God they asked us to do a workshop because we think it's a very interesting aspect of education. Um, we got to make some furniture that, uh, that maybe felt like uh, we could have made it in the, in the workshop. Um, and moving up through that building, uh, you enter this building in the center here and you see that staircase uh, in the center of top. And we thought that staircase was fantastic because it would allow everybody to just freely move around this building. So we wanted to emphasize that staircase. Um, that building has uh, a number of functions on the left hand side, it's just casual study function. On the right hand side, it's got like a more serious auditorium, which is meant as a chamber music hall. Um, this is a, a view of that, uh, of that building. So you enter, it's still the same gray shell. Uh, and we're starting to kind of like work on that staircase to bring you up through that building. Um, a view to the, to the right when you enter, started to use some color in some of the, let's say, almost niches of this building where you could imagine that the reception for, uh, uh, for a, a music event would, would happen and it would also function as a, uh, the reception to the building. Uh, moving up first floor, you see this kind of like transition spaces throughout the building again. And here you start to peek into that auditorium. Um, a little bit closer, so this is like a, a, a music space uh, designed for music, uh, hence that all the, the materials and the, the shapes are also defined by music. So for instance, these domes on the ceilings are concrete domes that are be needed to kind of like diffuse the sound. Um, the wood, of course, the same story. Um, going up further, so these are more like generic teaching spaces. And we're actually ramping up further over the staircase to sort of the climax of that, uh, of that teaching space, which is the, the library, which is on top. Um, client placed a lot of emphasis on this library. Um, we wanted to create an environment where you really study in between the books. Um, and so we, we tried to create this space, which was uh, uh, a number of rooms, uh, a series of rooms where we have different um, seating environments in the middle. So it's, it's very formal, but when you start to use it, it will diversify by different books and by different seating arrangements. And, um, the ceilings had this uh, only one possibility to create extra height, which was in the center of these, uh, of these rooms. So that's why we put these dome kind of like lighting elements in there, so to enforce the study in the, in the center of the spaces. That's what I wanted to tell you. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. So where did we start last time? Very good project, Vincent. Thank you. Um, I guess my question goes back to your first di diagram, the five images that you create. So I understood the four. I yep. understand the four. The fifth one, the wood as a portal. Mm -hmm. made a lot of sense so i see it here it's a portal between one room to another i see it in your entry sequence the question i have is on two places which is the stairway okay. you have the auditorium as a portal but then when the stair the wood became a skin yes. it's no longer a portal 
and the second one is in that big auditorium that you said everyone shares it became white walls mm. so you kind of contradict yourself there because everything else horizontal entry the space of you know congregating all had that wood but the vertical which is also a portal yes you start to lose it because I, I know that it's beautiful space so you know I'm just um, curious You're saying he's not following his rules? <laughs> In many ways, but it's he's allowed to break the rule. He just <laughs> have to admit to it. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a little bit how we, we, how we roll, let's say. <laughs> um, for the staircase, I, I'll address a little bit one by one. So it's a little bit how we roll in the sense that, uh, yes, we allow ourselves to break the rules. Um, in this case, we wanted the floor material to continue upwards. So we thought that was so powerful, but then we would end up with like this complete concrete uh, uh, staircase. So to dramatize the idea that the staircase is actually a space that, that surrounds you, we, we kind of like put the skin around you, but it is true that it's a skin. Um, uh, for the white walls in the main space, um, we wanted these walls to be white because we thought that if the whole space would feel like this warm enclosure around you, the white walls in the center would be very dramatic and when the sun kind of like passes through that space, and I know that the architect uh, really based a lot of emphasis on, on creating that element for the... Uh, um, we, we allowed ourselves to break the rules, let's say. Beautiful project. I really enjoyed the uh, subdued, but yet very elegant and efficient, I suppose, uh, color scheme. Uh, my question would be relating to the various furnitures, especially desks and um, those chairs that you presented. You mentioned that there was a mix of materials hmm. from bamboo to oak. Uh, you added some cork. Can you tell us a bit more about that and where the ideas came from? Um. Oh, how to say that? Um, the, the, this project is a very sort of organic project. It didn't, the commission didn't come about in one time. So the first asked us to design one space and then they asked us to do another space. And then, and we really enjoyed that. And we, we realized that the client did it like that because he felt that uh, we should really think about every step of the way. And, and um, uh, him being like a, a very, uh, a Chinese scholar almost um, we wanted to go into more depth than to just present the, the, the let's say the industrial surface kind of thing so we enjoy designing furniture and if we're giving the opportunity then we're very happy to to think that uh, uh, a desk is very easily made in a uh, in a nice bamboo machine made thing that is not gonna crack on you whereas uh, a leg it can be very beautifully made in a workshop so you you create that element of of craft uh, inside your project thank you <laughs> a very beautiful project and uh, this is not a critic but uh, i was thinking that it it looks like more more like the Bank headquarter to me, like the living <laughs> living student campus. But of course, these photos have taken before the people have moved in, so it will come. But my question is about the library. That uh, mm. how you have taken care of the flexibility because the we are living in the uh, digitalization world, and there is al always less and less books. So you have so strong idea in your floor plan with ah. a bookshelf. So yeah. how flexible is this? Um, one of the specific conditions of working in China is means that you sometimes get a commission before there's a program. And um, uh, this is also one of these cases. So I was asked to design this library before there was a librarian on board, before there was any philosophy around like what this library should be. And, um, but what I do very much appreciate actually in classic libraries is that they manage to kind of like create that, that uh, study environment no matter what the time is and no matter what uh, uh, for future use is going to happen there. So I deliberately, we deliberately steer that way to kind of like make something that on the one hand side is formal and on the other hand side gives you a diversity of use of the different spaces without us knowing, uh, offering some flexibility towards the, the future.
So my thoughts are really about the mood of the building. Hmm. It's, it's very uniform in colour. And I didn't like the staircases. They're too boxy, they're too serious, they yeah. look like renderings. Yeah. Um, the bit I liked the most was the workshop mm. because it looked as though you were taking the lid off a bit. Mm. You know, there were those funny, rather crude chairs. Mm. I thought that I want to encourage you in that direction where yes. there's a little bit of quirkiness and eccentricity and I wonder if that was actually a battle for you between the the inventive, the un the the unusual, the unknown, and the known. Because the mm. overall effect is a little bit insipid. It's mm. a bit kind of universal. Mm. Uh, but here, there's a sense of place and the real making and your discoveries yeah. that yeah. came with kind of making these things. Yeah. Um, you're right that we enjoyed making this space. <laughs> um, oh, it's, I find it difficult to answer in the sense that um, when you're asked to work on something that is the beginning of a long process of inhabitation, then uh, maybe we're a little bit guilty of listening too much to the building and, and uh, 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 trying to work too much mostly on the structure that is going to happen so because um, uh, we cannot let's say predict the future of this building for the next uh, five years so if we are thinking that this is not just a moment in time then I'm thinking to create this backbone for for that future use for kind of like uh, is maybe the most responsible thing that we could do okay Thank you. yeah I like the diagrams you showed at the start. I think they were very clear and they told the story. But I, I just, to me, it doesn't look like uh, an educational building. I think the same, <laughs> uh, the same problem. It looks very corporate. Uh, and I, I mean, the, the, there are photographs, are they? Are they not CGI's? Are these all photographs? Everything we saw was a photograph. Yes, 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 yes. Because right. yes. uh, yeah. I, 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 I was, amused by it because it looked too perfect. <laughs> but, uh, I'd, I'd, like to, I'd like to respond a little bit to this. I'm, I'm grown up in, uh, in the Netherlands with a lot of institutional environment and uh, basically every hospital, every school, every place you go into is, uh, is furnished with vinyl floors, uh, white uh, uh, system ceilings and, um, uh, and, and big baseboards everywhere around. And, and that's what defines um, a school or like an institution or like and actually uh, uh, the first decision that we took in this project whatever we're going to do we're not going to do that we're not going to so we deliberately dismissed white uh, uh, as, a, as a building and we adopted the gray as a background for whatever is going to happen next um, okay. Okay, just a quick one. Thank you very much. Um, uh, just a quick question on the education, the pedagogy of the institution. It, it may be quite traditional. Um, so how does your design influence and change and enhance that? Um, I wish I could answer your question. Uh, so like, as I said before, so the, the client here is, uh, has been in negotiation with uh, different... Uh, He's gone up to the chair of Harvard to kind of like a philosophy chair of Harvard to discuss this project and he's kind of like for him this thing has, is not an instant thing so he hasn't really we haven't really gotten to the moment where it's actually functioning at the moment it is an uh, uh, sort of like extracurriculum education facility but uh, it's yet to take more shape thank you thank you, thank you.